Hello YouTube friends and subscribers. We are going to be doing a bit of tree cutting today. I've purchased uh, a 20 centimeter McAllister pole saw from Screwfix and uh, first thing we're going to need to do is assemble it. The McAllister pole saw. Now this little job here I bought uh, for my wife as a combined uh, Christmas and birthday gift. You should have seen the look on her face. So what we're going to do is set the thing up and go outside and give the uh, bushes a bit of a trim. Right. Let's just see. I suppose I should actually read the instructions, but this seems to... Uh, be reasonably self-explanatory. Okay, just following the instructions, um, they say use the Allen key to remove this um, bolt here. And that comes out when you unscrew it enough. nut drops out the other side and the contacts the trigger is on the end of the pole so this is the where the electrical contacts are made um, this uh, the way this joins has got just got a little notch there to locate it so you get the two sides well the first thing to do is pull that out a bit so you can give yourself some room to work. And then, um, let's have a look, there it is. Then that will Yeah, it's true, it is, a, it is a bit fiddly. We like doing it in real life, not in a sort of studio. Yeah. And that goes in there, and then you can take your bolt and pop it straight back through. Tighten it up on the back there. And just use your Allen key to Retighten that. And so far, no tools required. And that then creates the electrical connection. And so your two sides are squeezed up together there, and the electrical connection's roughly about there. It's recommended that you tighten these other bolts up a little bit just to make sure that the handle has got a nice firm grip on the top end where the motor and the chain is. Spread the chainsaw out with the cutting edges of the chainsaw pointing in the direction of the rotation. Right, so here's our chain. How do you know which is which? Well, just, just looking at the teeth on there, my feeling is that the direction of rotation there is clockwise. That little tooth there, that is the actual blade. So that is the direction of travel. Uh, slide the chainsaw into the groove on the guide bar. Okay, so those little tips there will, I'm guessing, sit in the groove 
on the bar. And uh, if we were doing this in a studio, that would already be done now. So they are going to sit around there. Obviously there's this slack end, which presumably goes around that thing. Align the chainsaw and the guide bar assembly with the drive sprocket and the mounting bolt. It feels as if that's that thing. This is where that um, Phillips head has... Um, I don't know what's happened there, whether they test them in the factory. So that is going to go on there. I'm guessing. Um, oh, I see. Because this is a variable position, that's how you tighten the chain up, I guess. Uh, the chainsaw movement is an in is as indicated by the arrow figure eight. Okay, I can't see any arrow. No, there's no arrow. Make sure the chain saw is pr properly placed over the sprocket wheel of the guide bar. Please make sure the tension wheel 20, this is the tension wheel, or, or this blue thing is, uh, is in the position as shown in figure nine um, the plastic has got an actual sort of arrow on it on there and there. I don't know if you can see it. It's not easy to see. It's part of the uh, way the plastic is pressed. And there's an arrow on the blue stuff and an arrow on the grey stuff. And they are meant to line up. Uh, yes. Refit the cover. This is the whole thing. Fit the rear of the cover, cover, then the front, so that's the rear. And then the front. Uh, slight, slightly tighten the locking wheel. Do not tighten the locking wheel completely. S saw chain tensioning is required first. Okay. I'm quite sure what that means. We're doing it live, guys, as you know. We don't do uh, rehearsals here. Not quite sure. That seems to live there like that. That actually holds the thing together. <coughs> Something, it doesn't feel right to me at the moment. You can see where that bolt goes. That bolt goes into that hole. So, we'll fit it the back end first. That's what it said. I like to see that. Right. Make sure that little notch goes in there and that stopper goes in that hole. And then you can tighten it. What did it say? Finger tight or something? Making sure that those arrows still line up. Tighten that down a bit more. No, it's beginning to look like something. Uh, refit the cover, fit the rear first, <clears throat> ensure the pin is located in the position. Slightly tighten it, do not over tighten it completely. Note, the chainsaw has not yet been tensioned. Tension the chainsaw as described under saw chain tensioning. The chain should move freely. 
and it should have a bit of play there of two to four millimeters. So when you pull down on the chain, you should see a gap off the bar of two to four millimeters apparently. Uh, if you're good at guessing what two to four millimeters looks like, good luck. I think that looks like about two and a half to three millimeters there. So we'll call that okay. If you want to adjust it any time after you've uh, had a go and the chain is stretched, you slacken off this nut, you pull the whole thing out again and then you tighten it back down. So, so long as the threads on this don't break, you, you're gonna be fine. Now we're gonna look at the oil tank. Now we've got some chain oil here, which I found kicking around. Uh, a few people in the feedbacks have said uh, the oil leaks for various reasons. Uh, it looks as if it would benefit from having a decent uh, rubber uh, washer inside there, but anyway, that's probably not available from China. Uh, you top up this reservoir to within uh, five millimeters of the, of the top. Now I'm just going to go careful to start with to see just to make sure it doesn't start running out of somewhere unexpectedly. Very sticky this chain oil. Okay. Fill that up to within five steady. You could easily end up with this all over the place. A funnel might be a good idea. Uh, how you know when you're five millimeters from the top, that's anybody's guess. I'm gonna call that done. I don't think it's gonna matter if it's below as so long as there's some oil in there. Tighten that back down. And we should be nearly ready to go. Well, here we are outdoors. We'll give it a, 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 we'll give it a, a Okay. What we want to see now is, did any oil go around that bar? Yes, it did. I can see it glistening. Right, the extension of the pole saw is not going to be enough to reach up into this oak tree. So, take the precaution of getting the ladder out the garage. And we are going to go up the ladder with the chainsaw.
obviously this uh, work is only suitable for young fit people who are not afraid of going up a ladder. Okay guys, there you have a real-time uh, DIY chainsaw job using this uh, McAllister four, uh, 20 centimeter, 8 inch blade. First thing to say is when that thing's extended it's pretty heavy and uh, balancing up there on the ladder it's heavy enough, believe me. The other thing is, of course, as you saw, it slices through those uh, branches like a knife through butter if you can get yourself organised properly. Right, now just quickly, you can see that the chain has now become slack. So, I'm going to disconnect the power and then I'm going to see if we can tighten this up as uh, directed in the instructions. So we slacken this off, pull, just pull the bar tight and then tighten it back up. Well, thanks for watching everyone. I hope you found that moderately interesting. We've been using this McAllister um, 200 centimeter or 8 inch pole saw to cut some branches out the top of our um, oak tree. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, that'd be good, thank you. You'll be able to see what else we get up to in the DIY around the house, around the car, and even some photography tips.